Some brandy, Jared. Oh, I don't think so, Jim. After a dinner like that, the best brandy in the world would be an anti-climax. Well, that's what I don't understand. What's that? Well, you two went to the same law school together, but Jim never pays me compliments like that. Oh? Well, I must plead mitigating circumstances, my love. After all, I am your husband. A very poor defense, Mr. Scanlon. I suggest you get yourself a good lawyer. <laughs> you will have some coffee, won't you, Jared? Yes, please. Well, well, what's all this? A little homework? The Cunningham case. Oh, yes. Well, I'd say from the, uh, from the looks of this, you finally got something on him. I have. Receipts, affidavits, depositions. I can prove his men dynamited the Collier Dam. Everything there points to the fact that his motive was to buy up the flooded farms cheap. That sounds a little like an opening address to a jury. It might be. And this time, there's going to be no tampering with the jury, no bribery of witnesses, no falsifying evidence. This time, Mr. Joshua T. Cunningham is going to find out that he is not above the law. He is going to prison, Jared. You go after him like that in court, and I'll bet on you. You know, Jim, I'm curious about one thing. What's that, Jared? Well, Cunningham and his lawyer are no fools. They know you're the best prosecuting attorney in California. I'm surprised they haven't moved for a change of venue. They did. Judge Farnham denied the motion. It's beginning to dawn on Mr. Cunningham that the days of the freebooters in this state are over. I hope you're right. You excuse me. Thank you. Could be expected after what happened to Jim Scanlon the other night. Yes. Jim was gifted and honest. Two things Cunningham couldn't cope with. Except with a shotgun. How is Mrs. Scan? Well, she went up to Sacramento to stay with her sister. Mother went with her, so she wouldn't have to travel alone. Well, Howard, sit down. We're about to have lunch. Will you join us? Uh, no. Thank you, Art. Well, to get to the point of my visit, as you know, it's my job as chairman of the county board of supervisors to appoint an acting district attorney to replace Jim Scanlon until an election can be called. That shouldn't be difficult. Well, under ordinary circumstances, I'd appoint Mark Bromley. He was Scanlon's assistant for two years. He's acquainted with the work of the office. But... But what? 
Bromley's young, inexperienced. He's never prosecuted a case on his own. Cunningham's lawyer would tear him to pieces and feed him to the jury, one bite at a time. I guess you know why I'm here. I think you underestimate Mark. He's young, smart, and clever. He has the advantage of having helped Jim prepare the Cunningham case. He knows it inside and out. And he also knows Cunningham, and he's scared. Well, then there must be other lawyers. None as qualified as you are, Jared. Once you served as assistant district attorney, Yes, and I was about the same age that Mark is now, and just as scared. Believe me, he'll get over it. Jared. No, Audra. How can you say no? Jim was your best friend. And that's exactly why I won't prosecute Cunningham. I don't understand. If Cunningham's lawyer is as smart as I think he is, he's going to try and convince that jury that I'm not prosecuting his client because he blew up Collier Dam, but because I'm trying to avenge the death of a friend. You'll pose Cunningham as the victim of some kind of personal vendetta and probably get away with it. I don't think that's valid, Jared. Neither do I. The jury will judge the facts. Maybe, and maybe not. I don't intend to take the gamble. All right, Jared. All I could do was try. Audra? Jared, who I've else? I've made my decision, Audra. All right. I just hope you don't regret it. Come in, Jared. I hope you don't mind. We made ourselves at home. Mason had a key that happened to fit the lock. Sit down, Jared. What do you want? Well, I've got a problem, Jared. The state land office is starting hearings next week in Sacramento on a new open range policy. Now, I'm interested in getting my views before the board. As you know, I'm stuck here in Stockton because of this stupid dynamiting charge the state has against me. It occurred to me that I could hire you to represent me in Sacramento. Hearings will last four, maybe five weeks. I'll make it worth your while. Get out of here, Cunningham. A thousand a week and expenses. How's that sound? Get out. You're too busy to take the job. I'm always busy. You'll get a bill for that. That's enough, Carell. As talk around town, you may be appointed acting district attorney. Is there? I heard Howard Gaines was out to your place yesterday. I asked you to take the job. Remarkable how you keep your ear to the ground. <laughs> I assume you accepted that. You know, you could have saved yourself this masterful attempt to buy me off. What? I turned Gaines down. I think you made a very wise decision, Judd. Whatever you may think of my offer to represent me before the land office, it still stands. It's yours if you change your mind. I think I just did. What? Change my mind. What? what? You are much too anxious to have an inexperienced assistant like Mark Brownlee prosecute your case. So I'm going to be in that courtroom when your trial opens. And I'm not going to let up on you until I put a rope around that rotten throat of yours for the murder of Jim Scanlon. Now, for the last time, get out.
Well, now, I'll be looking for that bill from you, Barkley. You'll get paid. make knives like they used to. I hadn't noticed. It's a fact. It is a fact. Ah, uh, now that's fascinating information. Mm -hmm. Nick, do you mind? Oh, I just think. Oh, it chips all over the place here. Yeah, that's better. <sighs> Oh, sure don't make knives like they used to. They also don't make desks like they used to. <sighs> Look, Nick, why don't you go get something to eat? I'm not hungry. What do you mean you're not hungry? You're always All hungry. Right. the last of Mr. Scanlon's file on the Cunningham case. Thanks. If there's anything more I can do, don't hesitate to let me know. Mark. I, uh, I kind of feel I should apologize for taking this case. Apologize? Why? Well, it would have been quite a chance for you to make a name for yourself. <laughs> it's a great chance for me to fall flat on my face, too. The important thing is to get Joshua Cunningham, Jared. Maybe I could have. Maybe he isn't good enough. I know you can. Thanks, Mark. Good night. Here, Mark. Good night. Howdy. Oh, now, this is too much. What'd I say? Look, one well-intentioned brother is enough, but two is impossible. Now, look, why don't you get out of here and go get something to eat so I can get some work done? Out. No, no, now, wait a minute. Just go get yourself a beer, anything. Only leave me alone so I can work. One condition. What's that? That you don't budge from this office. I promise. Beer? Beer. Beer. Close your eyes to different degrees of light. Tell me if you see anything at all. Anything? Nothing. Keep trying. Anything? I can feel the heat, but that's all. Is it permanent? I can't tell. Well, what do you mean you can't tell? You just examined him, didn't you? Go on, doctor. 
The two major causes for sudden blindness are damage to the optic nerve or an hysterical blindness brought on by an emotional shock. Which is it with Jared? I can't be sure yet, but if damage has been done to the optic nerve, then blindness is permanent. And if it's shock? Then there's a chance he can recover. When or how soon, I don't know. We can only wait. But in the meantime... In the meantime, he's blind. Doctor, what can we do? I don't know. I only know what you shouldn't do. Don't pity him or cry over him. Don't lead him around like a crippled puppy. Adjustment to this is going to be hard enough for him under the best of circumstances. But if you cripple him with your concern, then you'll make it impossible. That goes for all of you. We understand, Doctor. I uh, was looking for some water. I tripped. Well, I'm going to see Mr. Cunningham right now. I'll go with you. Barkley's brother. Cunningham, Hello, for two cents, I'd give you a beating to make you wish you weren't born. My credit's good. Help yourself. Just stand quiet. Hold it! Sorry, Sheriff. It's all just a little mistake. Yeah, yours. <laughs> what now, Cunningham? Came looking for trouble, man. And they found it. Cunningham. You just best go to prison, because I'm going to get to you. Watch it, Nick. I know what I'm saying, and I mean every word of it, and you know it. All right. Oh. You're doing fine, Mr. Barkley. Just fine. Thank you, Silas. Silas, would you please get me some eggs from the hen house? I'd like them now. Yes, ma'am. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Jared. Well, it uh, seems I'm on my own. You've lived in this house all your life. You know it by heart. No more pampering, huh? Isn't that the way you want it? All right. Here we go. So there, there should be a little table right over here. Right about. Right about here. Right here. The living room is right over there. The archway is right up there, so the... Should be about one, two, three, four steps. Don't stop now. All right, let's try the living room. There should be some chairs right over here. Two, 
three. Four. Five. It's fine. Drapes are open. How could you tell? I can feel the warmth of the sun. Darren, Nick took the crystal off your watch. You can tell the time by touching the hand. <laughs> Remind me to thank you. I'll fix you some breakfast. Ten after nine, right? right. What day is it? I mean, how long has it been since? Three days. Ten after nine, day, night, that's just words now. It's like living on the dark side of the moon. You can run along now, Audra. I'll be all right. came back as soon as I heard about, about what happened. Yes, well, I, I was hoping maybe you wouldn't hear. Seems to me you've already had enough. I'm all right now, thank you, Jared. I brought you dinner. Yes, I know. Ham, isn't it? Baked. <laughs> Show off. There, now you eat and I'll talk. Sharon, I, uh, I wonder if you'd mind not staying. Oh? Well, you see, what I euphemistically refer to as my awkward situation is, well, it's particularly acute at mealtime. Jared, I understand. Do you? <laughs> no, I, I don't think you really do. Maybe, maybe a little demonstration. Now, the, uh, the meat, now, that's not particularly a problem, but the vegetables, <laughs> oh, those vegetables, now, that is the real challenge. Now, let's see. Now you can understand why I prefer to eat alone. I can afford myself the luxury of using my fingers. We'll talk later then. Yes. She was only trying to help. You can't go on like this. Well, you... Jared. Do you know an attorney by the name of Marvin Sanders? Yeah. Yeah, he's Cunningham's lawyer. Well, he and Cunningham just had a powwow in Sanders' suite at Stockton House. Well, what of it? You know who else was there? Now, how would I... Mark Bromley. Now, if Bromley's going to prosecute, what was he doing meeting with Cunningham and his attorney? That could be an explanation. Mm-hmm, including the fact that Bromley sold out. Cunningham either scared him off or paid him off, or a little bit of both. 
You can't be sure of that. Well, then what was Bromley doing sneaking out the back door of that hotel? He did what? I saw him. The meeting still could have been innocent enough. Perhaps so. But can you take that chance? What do you mean, me? You're still acting district attorney of this county. Well, a simple letter of resignation will take care of that if someone will be kind enough to write it for me. It's too late for that. If Mark Bromley has sold out, the rest is up to you. I can't go into that courtroom? I can't do it! Yes, you can. Now listen to me, Jared. Nothing has been decided. Perhaps one day you will see again. But if and when that day comes, it won't mean a thing if you can't stand the sight of yourself. Do it. sworn, we will proceed with opening statements. Are you ready for the state, Mr. Bromley? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sanders? The defense is ready, Your Honor. You may proceed, Mr. Bromley. What's he doing here? Your Honor, I apologize for this interruption. That's quite all right, Mr. Barkley. As acting district attorney, I assigned Mr. Bromley to this case. However, I've changed my mind. It's my intention to prosecute the case myself. Very well, Mr. Barkley, if you're prepared to proceed immediately. I am, Your Honor. Mr. Bromley, you may need those. Your Honor, this sudden change in prosecutors comes as a complete surprise to the defense. Had I known Mr. Barclay was going to be my adversary, I might have planned my case with more of an eye to... An eye to what, Mr. Sanders? It's a delicate matter, Your Honor, and I'm loath to bring it up, but in fairness to my client, I feel I must. I... I'm referring to Mr. Barclay's blindness. And the fact that the sympathy and compassion that we all have for him will exert an undue influence on the jury in arriving at a verdict. Your Honor. One moment, Mr. Barclay. What are you proposing, Mr. Sanders? Uh, well, in justice to my client, Your Honor, I respectfully request that Mr. Barclay withdraw from the case. Mr. Barclay? I have no intentions of withdrawing, Your Honor. Well, in that case, Your Honor, I suggest that the defendant cannot receive a fair and impartial hearing in this court. Mr. Sanders. If he could, he would be acquitted, and Mr. Barkley knows that. And that's the reason for his sudden and dramatic takeover of this case. He's come here not to prosecute the defendant, but to persecute him. He says to the jury, forget the evidence. Convict Joshua Cunningham because you pity me. No. Yes, Mr. Barkley. You've come here to wave your affliction and helplessness around in the face of the jury like a flag. You shut up. Order. Now, I warn you, Mr. Barkley, I will tolerate no such outbursts in my court. Sit down, sir. Nick. Uh, your Honor, I move for a mistrial. Motion denied. When you're ready, Mr. Barkley. Well, I'll be brief. It's the state's contention in this case that on June 24th last, Collier Dam was dynamited. Dynamite planted at the instigation of the defendant. Now, the state will offer conclusive evidence of this. We will further introduce evidence that will show that the motive of the defendant 
was simply to... I'm all right, Nick. I'm all right, let me alone. Are you all right, Mr. Barkley? Yes, I'm fine. Now, gentlemen, as I was saying, the state will offer conclusive evidence that they... Get me out of here. Get me out. Court will recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. How about a drink? No, thank you. Tearing a blind man apart isn't something I care to celebrate. Here you go, Andrew. Right here. Well, I think somebody better tell Bromley the job is all his. You don't mean that. Jared, what did you expect when you walked into that courtroom? Didn't you know Cunningham's lawyer would tear into you? Yes. Yes, but I hoped I'd be able to take it. You can. Will you stop it? Will you stop trying to tell me how brave I am? I was lost out there. A lawyer has to be able to see. He has to look into a witness's eyes and know whether he's telling the truth or not. He has to know what effect he's having on the judge, the jury. He... He can't plead his case to the wall. Take me home. Jared, I'm not going to insult you by saying I know how you feel. I don't know. No one does. But one thing I'm sure of, and it frightens me just as much as that courtroom frightened you, that if you don't do this, you'll never do anything. You'll just sit in darkness for the rest of your life being afraid, always afraid. I need more time. I don't believe that. Time is your enemy, not your friend. Time will only ask for more time. Shall we go? I just feel so helpless out there. You don't have to, Jared. What are you going to do? Whittle me a pair of eyes? You can hear, can't you? And you still have a memory. And you're going to learn that courtroom. You're going to get to know every inch of it, every stick of furniture and every crack in that floor. By tomorrow morning, you're going to feel as much as home in that courtroom as if you built it yourself. get started. Now, uh, Nick, you just said, it, said was... it was good. I didn't say it was perfect. That's what it's got to be tomorrow morning when you walk into this courtroom. It's important, Jan. So, gentlemen of the jury, on the basis of the evidence and the evidence alone, the state is confident that you will find Joshua T. Cunningham guilty. Your Honor, I call Simon Templeton. And as proprietor of the Dry Forks General Store, did you, on the afternoon of June 21st, sell an unusually large amount of dynamite? I did. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. I now.
now hand you this receipt and ask if you recognize it. I do. It's a receipt for the dynamite I sold. And to whom is that receipt made out? Joshua T. Cunningham. Your Honor, the state offers this receipt and evidence. Well. I wonder if I might trouble you gentlemen for a glass of water. On June 21st, you were in Daleburg, more than 100 miles from Kalia Dam. How many more times I got to answer that? Once more, Mr. Carell. Yes! Come now, Mr. Carell, even I can see that you are lying. Objection? Sustained. Mr. Barkley, you know better than to make a remark like that. My apologies, Your Honor. You're excused, Mr. Carell. Call Amy Carter. That's right. I own the Big Nugget on the Dry Forks Road, about two miles above Kalia Dam. And on the evening of the 21st, did several men come in for a drink? Yeah. Did you know them? No. Could you recognize them if you saw them again? Sure. Miss Carter, are any of those men in this courtroom now? Three of them. Him. Him and, uh, him. You gotta make a liar out of that car woman when you cross him, Salvador. I'll do my best. You give me up. I'll play out the hand counting him. But you might as well face it. Barkley has got you right by the throat. What if something should happen at the time? An accident, for instance. I don't want to hear talk like that. We'll bring Bromley back into the case, and I'd still have a chance. Good night, Sanders. Good night. some coffee. Ah, that's what I need. When did Heath and Nick say they'd be back? Oh, they'll be riding herd until morning. <laughs> I thought it was kind of quiet around here. Mrs. Barkley. Mrs. Barkley. Mrs. Barkley? Dr. Mara sent me. Dr. Mara? Your son Heath's been hurt in a fall from his horse. Nick took him to the dock in town. The doc thinks you better come. Silas, get the buggy. And Silas, I want you in order to go with her. Yes, sir. I'll get back to town. Now run along. I'll be all right. Run along.
want, Corral. Come on, I know it's you. You're the only man in town that wears those fancy Mexican spurs. Isn't that Mason with you? Smell that cheap pomade a mile away. And where you have Mason and Corral, you usually have Cunningham. Isn't that right? That's right, Barclay. So Heath wasn't hurt after all. Just a ruse to get me alone. You thought you had the rope around my throat, Barclay. You'll never get away with this. That's possible. It's also possible that I can. If you're not in court on Monday morning, Bromley takes over. Bromley can't help you now. He can if he agrees to a mistrial. And I think he can be persuaded that such a motion is in order. Stand up. He said, get up. Barkley. All right, Cunningham. What are you going to do with me? You're going to have an accident. There's an open well out back. You went out to get some fresh air. You uh, got confused, stumbled, fell into the well, and drowned. Take a look outside. All clear. Bring him along. All right, Barkley. Let's go. some light in here. Upstairs, I'll check the kitchen. Yeah. Looks like he busted them all.
in there. Come on. out. Drop him. Better tell him to drop him. Do as he says. One at a time so I can hear him fall. I can take him. Come on, try it. We'll see which one gets it first, me or your friend here. No, Carell. Let me hear it fall, Carell. I'll kick him over here where I can feel him. Get on your horses and let me hear you ride just as fast as you can. Do as he says. Sit in that with this gun in your head until somebody comes to take you off my hands. It's been a pretty long three weeks for you, Jared. The longest of my life, Doctor. Now, well, let's get on with the work. Try these first three lines. Are those letters still blurred for you? Huh? Oh, uh, M-T-E-L-E-H. Fine. Now, go on with the next one. F-D-P-L... T C E O. <laughs> Pretty good, even though you did get a little ahead of it. But, Doctor, that's not. Not the second line, no. It's even better. F D P. Oh, Jared. <laughs> oh, Jared. Oh. There's no doubt about it, Jared. You're as good as new. You're very fortunate that there wasn't any damage to the optic nerve. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Well, we got some fences to mend. Yeah, we're uh, very glad for you, Jared. Right now, we we got to get to work. Uh, hold it a minute, Nick. Why? Could you boys use a little help? Well, I, uh, well, how do we sure could? Well, I'm your man. Uh, you're not you're not serious with those uh, lily white hands of yours. <laughs> well, I don't think I'd look any sillier digging a post hole than you must have looked in that courtroom. <laughs> 